So going back to the symptoms, what, how how would you, what should you do if you ha if your spouse, right, or your mother, or your father, or, or even one of your neighbors, is acting, is acting high, if if there, when should you be concerned enough that you want to be asking somebody about, really looking at this closely. Well, I would say that I can give you an example. Um, I, I mentioned if somebody is, gets concerned if they lose their keys. Um, that happens to all of us. Um, but if, if, if you can retrace your steps and figure out the process to go back and find those keys, you probably don't have anything to worry about. But it's the person who loses things or gets, finds themselves lost and is just confounded and not able to, to, to figure that out. Yep. Um, there's probably a cause for concern. It may be a change in behavior, a little bit of a change in personality. Sometimes depression shows itself as yep. somebody's world gets smaller and smaller. Um, a family needs to, 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 to watch for these symptoms and get to the medical doctor as the first step. Um, yeah, I, I would think that, that uh, I, and not to interrupt you, but I would think that a lot of the depression and the kind of the, the emotional side of this could, would be a direct reaction to that because if Absolutely. I were if I, I would assume if I'm the elder I know something's different mm -hmm. and the, the, this must be just so frightening devastating just and frightening. So frightening yes and 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 so the so you said the is the first thing then well you may want to call the Alzheimer's Association would would Certainly. your 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 primary care physician be the right person to talk to? I think Was that's the place to start. Yeah. Um, because it's possible that there might be something physically going on that's causing symptoms that can be fixed or improved upon. Uh, but if the doctor is well, has concerns as well, I think it's important for for the doctor to refer to a, a neurologist yeah. um, who can do some further testing and really get at the diagnosis. And I know Tammy, I remember you you were talking about a, ca a case of someone that you had where they thought it was an Alzheimer's issue, but it turned out it was a... Uh, and, and pH, they had a normal pressure hydrocephalus, uh -huh. hydrocephalus which yeah. fluid on the brain, yeah. and had a shunt put mm -hmm. in, and the person yeah. was fine. And the fine. issue got resolved. But it can be medication right. side effects, it can be a, a vitamin deficiency, mm -hmm. non-treated um, depression right. can actually look mm -hmm. like dementia. Can look like dementia. So the, kind of the message of the story is that the last thing you want to do is nothing. nothing. That's right. Because I think one of the things that I find when I'm, I'm talking to my clients is that as opposed to cancer, as opposed to diabetes, that Alzheimer's isn't regarded as a disease, it's regarded as an embarrassment. Mm. It, it, it's something that you just, you, you don't want to tell anybody about. And I, I, I find so often people who are, are suddenly they will stop making appointments. They'll mm -hmm. stop visiting their friends. They withdraw. Or their spouse will say, oh no, we don't want to see anybody mm -hmm. anymore because they just, they don't, they're just afraid. They're just afraid. Now, what about if you're afraid to go to your doctor? What if you just don't want to talk to them? As the, I know I've had people who, who they were concerned that, that having that visit on their medical record was going to may affect them later on. Is there anybody else? I know I've, I've heard of geriatric care managers. I've heard about, are, are there any other players where people, that people could go to initially to be talking about this? Or is that an Alzheimer's Association question? Well, there are um, there certainly is a lot of fear associated with yeah. facing the fact that that you might have the disease. Geriatric care managers are a wonderful resource in helping the elder and the, the family, the caregivers, do some planning and putting together services in the community. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that the, the most often the primary care physician is the least threatening of all the options because they 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 most often have a relationship. Yeah. And I think that uh, physicians are very sensitive to, to, to how they approach a patient um, and, and get them to the, to the care that they need. Yep. Um, certainly somebody could go to a, a geriatric psychiatrist. I think that may be more frightening in many instances, <laughs> although again, a wonderful service and a wonderful resource. I see. Um, but I, but see. I think the physician is, is most often the place to start. 
And and once you've once you've started down that, because of course both of you have, ex have have seen a lot of those kinds of cases, right? In general, obviously each, each person's situation is going to be specific. But in general, are there things that people can do if you've got the, if you've kind of got these very early symptoms, right? But you're you're just trying to slow things down, or you're mm -hmm. trying to keep from going from continuing down that road. Is there a, first of all is is there a cure? No. There's no cure at this no. point. So the real question is, can you slow it down, right? What can you do in general? Are there things that you've found because you're dealing with a lot of folks? And yes. I guess, and I'm, I'm, I'm interested in the role of the of the kind of program that you have, and I'm interested in the kind of services mm -hmm. that you're contracting for with various other sure. places in terms of what people can do. So it's pretty open ended. What can you do? I find that um, to slow it down. Well, first of all, to talk about going to the physician. There are medications out there that have been proven to slow the process down. Um, but that's a pharmacological approach. Um, the other is the, the trying to really fight that withdrawal and isolation. Because research has shown that socialization with other folks and getting out there and being in contact with people, using your brain, using your body, keeping it active, um, does slow it down. And that's what I've found in my experience. So both social, both social activity and physical activity, you're saying, yes. can both can both help. The Alzheimer's and Association has really been um, focusing on brain health, mm. um, just as we think about heart health mm -hmm. and other s diseases that ca that affect people's systems. Um, it's felt that if you eat well, you take care of yourself, the same old diet and exercise, yeah. that, that will help with brain health as well. Mm -hmm. um, the importance of the early diagnosis, which again is, is a focus of the Alzheimer's Association and all of us in the community, is that if while it may be frightening, it will empower the patient to actually be involved with planning, planning for legal issues, financial issues, how they want their care provided, what types of care, and even so far as end-of-life planning, it's, yep. it's probably the scariest of all topics, but an important conversation for parents to have with their grown children so that the, or the, any caregiver will know what that person's wishes are. Yep. So, it, so the Alzheimer's Association also has uh, support groups and educational programs for the patients themselves. Um, that's why it's so important to get that early diagnosis. That's an interesting point, to, mm -hmm. to be trying to address those issues as early as possible in the process and, as you were suggesting, to be trying to get your family involved in all right. of that, right? right? Although, once again, that's a real, mm -hmm. like if, in families that aren't, mm -hmm. haven't been working well, that mm -hmm. can be a tremendous, a tremendous source of dysfunction. Sure. That's the one thing, the empowerment mm -hmm. and education yep. um, is, is just so important mm -hmm. because then they feel like they can have and retain some sense of control. Right, right. So, in, in, so if you're, if you happen to be there and you're in these kinds of early stages, and you're calling elder services, mm -hmm. what can elder, what would elder services? Obviously, each person is different. But, sure. but, but can you be talk? Can you talk to us about the kinds of programmatic things or services that elder services would, would have available? Sure. I mentioned eligibility for our services mm -hmm. and our biggest program is the state home care program where we get mm -hmm. that funding to do the assessment, put together the care plan and pay for services to come into the home. However, so the state pays you to do that stuff to figure exactly, out how that package is exactly. going to and, and we And we have contracts in place for providers right. such as supportive day programs and adult day health and homemaker agencies um, that actually go into the home and we reimburse them using those state dollars. And, and, but, and when you were trying to figure that out, mm -hmm. what would be the process for doing that? If I called, if I called, either because my mom or my dad were concerned or if I was concerned for myself, right. what, would you, what would your person be doing? Our person would go into the home. And They'd actually come out and visit. It, do a home visit and do, a, and do an assessment there okay. with the elder and with any family members that that elder chooses to have present mm -hmm. and involved in the assessment. Mm -hmm. So we will look at eligibility for our services uh, but if somebody's not eligible, we will work with the elder and the family to, to try and come up with other options. We certainly can't do this alone, and there are many other services and providers, such as the, the PACE program out in the community, which yeah. is the program of all-inclusive care. So, so we'll either work to put, identify unmet needs 
and yep. to put services in place to meet those needs or to help people figure out the options to get those services. But I will That's say we've, we've got a number of programs, too many to, to talk about today. We, do, we have a large protective services unit which deals with uh, elder abuse and neglect. Mm -hmm. um, we do, we've got the nutrition program, the Meals on Wheels. But there are really three services that I would say would be helpful to an elder or a caregiver regardless of income or eligibility. And the first is our information and referral department, mm -hmm. where we've got resources for the whole of Worcester County um, that we can, we can, over the telephone, talk to somebody who they often don't know what it is they need or where they should begin, right. and sort through that and give them information. Yep. Um, we also have an options counselor program where we've got specially trained workers who will sit with an elder, sit with a family, sit with one person or ten people because it's a difficult road for a single caregiver. It's a difficult road when there are m many siblings trying to agree on the best course of action. Right. So the options, the, the options counselor will, will look at the whole range of, listen to the situation, mm -hmm. look at the whole range of options. And would that person, would that options counselor be typically functioning from your office or would that person also occasionally what be it, going? Whatever works. Whatever works. We, so could you, be in the people. home, in our office, or in another neutral setting if we need to bring a lot of people together. And once again, not to be repetitive about this, but that piece of the program you're saying is a piece of the program that you're basically doing free, free. as far as the elder is concerned. Yes. That's one of the things that the Commonwealth of Mass and the United States is paying for. Right. Our tax dollars at work. So elders shouldn't so often it's like we're, we're the, a lot of these folks are from that last, yeah. the, the Depression exactly. and World War II generation, and they don't want charity, mm -hmm. and, they, they, and they don't want to be relying on anybody. So the notion that, that this is just something that they've paid for, exactly. that they have paid for, and that they're entitled to, and to have someone not be forcing themselves into the home, but just going in to kind of talk about those options, that's just like really important. 